Hello, and welcome again for another episode of World of Guns Gun Disassembly. Today we're going to take a look at the Maxim machine gun. The Maxim gun was a weapon invented by British-American inventor Sir Hiram Stevens Maxim in 1884. It was the first prequel operated machine gun in production. It has been termed the weapon most associated with Imperial Conquest by British historian Mark Gilbert and was heavily used by colonial powers during the scramble for Africa during the era of new imperialism. The mechanism of the Maxim gun employed one of the earliest recoil operated firing systems in history. The idea is that the energy from recoil reacting on the breech block is used to eject each bench cartridge and insert the next one instead of hand operating the mechanism. Maxim's earliest designs used a 360 degree rotating cam to reverse the movement of the block. This was later simplified to a toggle lock. This made it vastly more efficient and less labor intensive than previous rapid firing guns that relied on actual mechanical cranking. The Maxim gun design was provided with water cooling, giving it the ability to fire at a rate for far longer than air cooled guns. The disadvantage of this was that it made the gun less flexible and attack than the lighter air cooled weapons, being heavier and more complex and requiring a supply of water to operate. Trials demonstrated that the Maxim could fire 600 rounds per minute. Compared to modern machine guns, the Maxim was a heavy, bulky, and awkward. A lone soldier could fire the weapon, but it was usually operated by a team or crew of 46 men. Apart from the gunner, other crew were needed to, spin, to speed reload, spot targets, and carry in ready ammunition and water. Several men were needed to move, to mount, move or mount the heavy weapon. Maxim established the Maxim Gun Company with financing from Albert Vickers. A blue plaque on the factory where Maxim invented and produced the gun is to be found in Hatton Garden at the junction of Clerkenwell Road in London. Albert Vickers became the company's chairman and it later joined hands with a Swedish competitor, Nordenfeld, to become Maxim Nordenfeld Guns and Ammunition Company. Finally, this company was absorbed into the Vickers Company, leading first leading to the first Maxim, Maxim Vickers gun and then the Vickers machine gun. Maxim's first patents related to the development of the Maxim were registered in June of 1883. The first prototype was demonstrated in October of 1884. A prototype of the Maxim gun was given by Hiram Maxim to the Amin Pasha Relief Expedition in 1886 under the leadership of Henry Morton Stanley. More of a publicity stunt than a serious military contribution, it was believed that merely exhibiting the gun was likely to prove a great peace preserver. In fact, the gun was used on several occasions, especially during the expedition's retreat from Central Africa, not because of its devastating effect, but as an effective means to scare off native attackers. The same prototype was brought back to Central Africa by Frederick Lugard, where it played an instrumental role in the establishment of a British protectorate over the present-day Uganga which is a strong testament to the sturdiness and reliability of the weapon and its prototype. However, the destructive power of the Maxim gun in colonial warfare has often been embellished by popular myth. Modern historical accounts suggest that while it was an effective pitched battles, its significance owed much to its psychological impact. The weapon was adopted by the British Army under the guidance of Sir Garnet Wolseley, who had been appointed Commander-in-Chief of British Armed Forces in 1888. In October that year, he placed an order for 120 rifle caliber Maxims. The gun's design was also purchased and used by several other European countries. The United States Army had shown an interest in the Maxim machine gun since 1887. Model 1889 and Model 1900 Maxims were used for testing and training. The gun was finally adopted in 1904 as the Maxim machine gun caliber 30, model of 1904 as the first rifle caliber heavy machine gun for standard use in the U.S. Army. The first 50 guns and tripods were made by Vickers and Sons, chambered for the 30 3 cartridge. Colt's manufacturing company was selected to produce it domestically with challenges with schematics and specifications delayed its introduction. By the time Colt began production in 1908, which was also the last year orders were placed for the guns, a total of 90 in 1904 were made by Vickers, Colt made their machine guns for the new 30 6 caliber, and the ones made by Vickers were rechambered for the new round. A total of 287 M1904 Maxims were manufactured. M1904 Maxims were 
issued to infantry companies and cavalry. The M1904 was deployed in operations in the Philippines, Hawaii, Mexico, Central and South America, but never saw much combat use. During World War I, it remained in the U.S. for training. By World War I, many armies had moved on to improved machine guns. The British Vickers machine gun was an improved and redesigned Maxim introduced into the British Army in 1912 and remaining in service until 1968. Now we'll take a quick look at uh, disassembly and reassembly of this beast. And this is a model of a Russian Tula Maxim produced at the Tula Armory in Russia. You'll see here it has a total of 190 parts all together and each part is being manipulated. You can see at the bottom of the screen the name of that part. This was an absolute beast of a weapon. Beautiful model though. So many intricate parts though. And that is a fully disassembled Maxim machine gun. Now back for the reassembly.
and there she is fully reassembled. What a beast. Right. And now for my favorite part, the operation. Alright. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful model of a Russian made Maxim machine gun. So, a few things to point out here. Uh, this was intended to be your your crew serve position. You can see the front side there, and your rudimentary rear side, which would also become a telescopic side, set for various ranges and yardages. The gun could be aimed manually, or you could fix windage and elevation using these cranks in here at the bottom if you want to provide suppressive fire at a certain range. As you can see it's got a uh, crate of 250 rounds of ammo right here attached to the right hand side feeding through on a belt. One thing that it is missing is that uh, up here in the front you can see a plug. There would, uh, there would be a catch device basically a tube with a box down here to catch recirculate water through the system. The water would be placed in this shroud around the front of the barrel to keep the barrel cool during extended firing. You could also add that uh, rehydration kit basically here in a fixed position or a defensive position to prevent from having to keep putting water in the gun. So, basic operation. Back here in the crew serve position. Two-handed. This is the trigger right here. There's a safety catch that flips up and down. Safety off. All you do is push the trigger bar. And spray a lot of lead. You'll notice that the uh, spent brass ejects out of this hole right here in the front. see on this side of the weapon where the toggle action is moving. Uh, you, you need to keep your hands away from that and also keep anything from bumping it during fire. A 250 round box of ammo will last quite a while at 600 rounds a minute. Sitting here at the gun. Sights up. As close as I can get. Uh, basically what it would look like from the operator's position. Now this heat, or this uh, armor shield can also be removed to lighten the gun. Of course it uh, doesn't provide much protection for the operator at that point. And it could also be mounted in a truck, a wagon, a jeep, whatever you want to mount it in. Let's just go ahead and empty this beast. And that's it. She's empty. So what you would do next is remove this ammo box, bring in a fresh box, and that feeder would go through the gun there. You'd cycle the gun twice to get a live round back under the chamber, and then you're back in business for another 250 rounds. And that's it, the maximum machine gun. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you feel generous. And I hope you'll be looking forward to the next episode.
Thank you.